In the previous recap video of Last of Us, we saw Tess blew herself along with a horde of zombies to save Ellie and Joel. In this video we'll experience their journey where they meet new friends and an emotional ending where we'll see Joel suddenly falls to the ground leaving tears in Ellie's eyes. Is Joel going to turn a zombie or was it something else? We'll see in this video. But before we dive in, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any of our contents. The location shifts to 10 miles west of Boston. Ellie and Joel are getting closer to their destination. But even though Joel gives Ellie her jacket, he still hasn't forgiven her for what happened to Tess. Ellie confronts him, telling Joel not to blame her for something that isn't her fault. The pair continues walking, a five-mile walk to Bill and Frank's house. Cumberland Farms, on the other hand, is a rundown and abandoned petrol station. Ellie discovers an arcade machine for Mortal Kombat 2 and makes jokes with Joel. Ellie goes off on her own and discovers a hatch leading down to the basement. She naturally decides to investigate alone where she discovers one of the infected. They're stuck into the wall this time, with mushrooms growing up the side of their head. Ellie delivers the killing blow, putting the changed beast to rest. With little ammo left, Joel decides to abandon his shotgun and continue on. Ellie comments on the government as they travel, accusing them for being unable to stop a pandemic while trying to figure out how it all started. According to Joel, the cordyceps mutated, entered the global food supply, and around the same time on a Thursday, individuals bought the food and then became ill, eventually leading to the infected biting everyone who wasn't. There are also several skeletal remains in the woods, which Joel claims are ordinary people who couldn't find a place to live in the quarantine zone, so the troops brought them outside and chose to shoot them. It's a bleak scenario that takes us back to September 30, 2003 to witness play out. Bill is watching from his residence as troops pick up everyone and ready to leave. Despite the necessary evacuation notice, Bill hides in the basement and avoids detection. Bill goes outdoors wearing a gas mask and a rifle, before seemingly realizing this himself and learning that he's completely alone. Bill, like a genuine survivor, gathers as much equipment as possible, including many drums of petrol, supplies from Home Depot, and a large quantity of booze. Bill has enough power to keep operating with his generator outside, and a fence has been erected around the town's border. Bill is also eating well, cutting up his own meat, seeing the infected take themselves out through as many traps, and surviving for four years on his own. That is, until one of the holes opens and Bill discovers a man named Frank within. Frank was initially part of a group of 10 people attempting to reach Boston, but now there is only Frank remaining. Bill decides to let the man out while keeping a careful check on him. He also examines for infection, and Frank is clear. Bill welcomes Frank into his home in exchange for a change of clothes and a promise of food. As the two sit down to eat, Frank is astounded by the big dinner and the perfect glass of wine to accompany it. Then we flash forward three years. Frank and Bill got into a fight because the former wants to paint the house, patch up some of the shops and acquire petrol for the mowers. Frank wishes to invite and welcome more people to the community. Frank, on the other hand, has been listening to the radio and talking to pals. Joel and Bill end up discussing outside, with the former pointing out that he could acquire stuff from the QZ. Specifically, equipment to aid in the construction of the perimeter fence, which Joel estimates has only about a year to go at best. They also agree to utilize radio music as a code, which was Frank's idea. Before they split ways, Joel cautions them that raiders may come and strike at night, and they must be prepared. Then we see the raiders arrive at the perimeter, as anticipated that night. Bill manages to keep them at bay, but is shot in the process. Thankfully, they survive as we fast forward another 10 years to see Bill and Frank grow older together. Frank, on the other hand, is not doing so well and decides that this would be his last day. With no doctor and no treatment, Frank wants to go out on his own terms, with a lovely last date plan that includes being married and falling asleep in Bill's arms after swallowing a large stack of drugs. Joel and Ellie arrive in Bill's hometown in the present. It's no longer in use. They make it into Bill's house, but with the rotting food on the table and a note from Bill on the living room table, the unavoidable occurs. He committed suicide. Bill also leaves a car key behind, which he takes as Ellie reads the note. Bill acknowledges in this note that he despised the world until one person changed his view and convinced him that it was worth rescuing. He also provides the bunker code and any other information they may require. The couple gathers as many supplies as they can in the bunker. Ellie also changes into her game-appropriate attire. Ellie was alone in the bathroom, playing with the revolver she found. She pulls the trigger, loads and unloads it, then returns to Joel. Joel fills up the petrol tank at an abandoned truck stop in preparation for their journey. Ellie reads out her puns from the comic she found earlier in the series, and they have some wonderful banter. There's also some wonderful speech pulled from the games, particularly those bits intended for Bill's town. Ellie grabs a mail magazine and remarks that the pages are stuck together. She eventually throws it outside, and the two continue on, eventually opting to camp in the middle of the forest. Joel advises them that they must be cautious because people may come and take them, so as the night falls, they light a large lamp and eventually sleep outside under the stars. 
stars. No one will find us, Joel promises her as they retire for the night. However, Joel remains awake and vigilant, which appears to be the prudent thing to do. The two continue on their journey in the morning and arrive at Kansas City, but the path forward is closed, forcing them to travel around and deeper into the city. Ellie fails to read the map, and to make matters worse, a man pretending injury appears and begins attacking them. They go on, driving over road spikes and being trapped inside an abandoned business. Joel instructs Ellie to escape through a nearby hole in the wall and hide while he deals with their enemies who arrive and begin firing. Ellie saves Joel from a man who is choking him and shoots him in the back. Joel commands her to return through the break in the wall before killing the man with a knife and putting an end to his suffering. A woman named Kathleen is looking for a man named Henry at the Fedra department. They know he is in town and are hell-bent on finding him. Kathleen holds a gun to the head of an elderly man who also happens to be her doctor and demands answers. He doesn't give them to them but a loud horn blast from outside draws Kathleen out to see what's going on. A large crowd has gathered to see the military bring in two dead bodies belonging to the guys killed in the firefight. Kathleen orders everyone to find out who did it and hold them accountable. Kathleen discovers evidence of Henry and Sam hiding away in an attic including drawings and a plethora of empty cans. Unfortunately, something far nastier awaits in the basement as the broken ground begins lurching and rumbling. Kathleen chooses to shut up the building and conceal this information from the others. Joel and Ellie are sitting at a bar with newspapers draped over the windows watching people look for apartments nearby. Joel apologizes to Ellie for having to shoot someone while inside but she admits it's not the first time she's had to kill. Before they make their move, he shows her how to properly grip the gun. Joel and Ellie arrive at an apartment building and begin ascending the stairs. As they camp out, there's a pretty sweet scene in which Joel begins to warm up to Ellie's puns. When they wake up, Henry and Sam are there holding them at gunpoint. Then the scene jumps to the past as Kansas City devolves into anarchy and riots following the epidemic. They hang police officers by the necks, causing the military to arrive with further weapons. Henry and Sam are among the survivors who keep their heads down and strive to survive. Kathleen gathers the townspeople and mocks them when Fedra is defeated. She goes on to tell them all that she is not Fedra, but that she will be the de facto dictator here. She also wants Henry, but no one knows where he is until a man speaks up and claims he's outside, meeting with an informant in a safe spot where they can hide out. Henry and Sam become close and resolve to ration their supplies. Henry thinks they'll have 11 days, but Sam is worried. Henry tries to calm him down by urging him to sketch on the walls. The two decide to set out on foot. The couple is about to leave when they hear gunshots ring out outside. It's the three-man firefight inside the department shop from the previous chapter. When Henry notices Joel inside, the two alter their plans. They proceed to the apartment complex. Henry expresses his desire to join hands with the pair and believes they should assist one another. As the four work together, Henry lowers his gun and decides to trust them. Sam and Ellie become friends as the four of them devise a strategy to escape Killer City. Henry wants to assist Joel and Ellie escape because he will benefit from it. Apparently, pointing an unloaded gun is the closest he's gotten to violence, so he needs Joel's ruthlessness to get them out. That's easier said than done when Kathleen controls everything, even the city's four motorways. There are also no infected as they were all driven underground 15 years ago, the same subterranean that Henry and Sam intend to enter in order to elude the soldiers. The Fedra person Henry trusted supposedly cleared out the entire house with his troops three years ago, but it's a risky plan based on shady intel. Joel is not convinced. The four make their way down to the maintenance tunnels with some beautiful callbacks to the first game. The location contains an old village that appears to have gone underground following outbreak day. Joel and Ellie come into some old comic comics and end up discussing about them. Ellie and Henry think it's a good idea to remain around and play for a while, so Joel lets them. While they are, Henry explains that he was not forthright about his murder earlier. Sam was diagnosed with leukemia and the only medication that helped him recover was held by Fedra. And Kathleen has gone utterly insane. After murdering the city's doctor and dismissing all of her cop, she goes missing and returns to her childhood chamber, which her brother occupied before he was killed. Kathleen resolves to seek justice and vengeance, despite her brother's warnings. Joel's troop makes it through the tunnels and out the other side. But there's an issue. There's a sniper up in the building across the street, so Joel has to get a jump on him and head around the back. Joel dashes around under the cover of darkness and slips inside the house, which is another amazing scene from the game. He meets an elderly man who happens to be working with Kathleen. Unfortunately, Kathleen and her ilk show up in droves. While Kathleen's squad stands outside the home, Joel employs the sniper to take out the truck driver. Henry, unable to reason with her, decides to confront her head-on, ordering Ellie to fire the fatal shot. Now, we have Joel with his sniper rifle, but just as he is about to fire, the ground suddenly caves in and guttural snarls result in throngs of the infected charging at Kathleen's party. The fire kills most of the infected, but something much larger emerges. It's a blow her. It quickly dispatches Kathleen's group, although Perry decides to buy them some time, I mean, he gets Kathleen about 3 seconds before he's actually ripped apart, while Kathleen also dies. With the combat over, the four locate a safe haven away from the 
mayhem. Sam has become infected. He's been bit and his leg is in bad shape. Ellie decides to stay up late with Sam, but he wakes up in the middle of the night. The infected Sam leaps on Ellie and tackles her to the ground, forcing Henry to kill Sam in cold blood. In shock and unable to deal with his loss, Henry turns the rifle on himself and fires. While Joel is burying Henry and Sam outside, Ellie writes I'm sorry on his whiteboard. The scene then jumps three months ahead. Joel holds a couple at gunpoint and demands to know where his brother Tommy is. Ellie also shows up disregarding Joel's orders to stay away and learns that the route west of the river is full of corpses and something far worse than the infected. Joel tends to believe them, but something is awry. He holds his chest and attempts to regain his breath before continuing. Joel and Ellie walk across the landscape, eventually pausing to create a fire and discuss what will happen in the future, as we've seen throughout the season. They also talk about Sam, including Ellie's attempt to save him with her blood. The couple eventually reach the dam and the river of death where they are besieged by a swarm of men on horses. They compel Joel to down his rifle and order Ellie to step back guns drawn. The boss tests them both for infection with a dog trained to sniff out infection, but the mutt detects nothing from Ellie. When they learn Joel and Ellie wish to meet Tommy, they are escorted to a community where many people are working. Tommy, who is currently doing construction work, is one of them. The couple exchanges hugs before being led inside to eat. Ellie becomes immediately hostile, hurling insults at anyone who glances at her and demanding her pistol be returned. She also instructs Joel to congratulate Tommy, who is now married to Maria. She continues to extol the virtues of communism before Joel announces his objective to escort Ellie to the Fireflies in exchange for a vehicle battery to meet Tommy. However, given what we know about the people, that objective has become quite complicated. Joel continues to press Tommy for assistance in getting Ellie to her destination. He says he's expecting a child with Maria and will not be continuing their relationship. Joel clenches his teeth and eventually agrees to go in the morning after grabbing some items. Maria confides in Ellie about Sarah, and as a result, Ellie and Joel have a lengthy discussion about their journey and what loss is. Joel eventually vows that they will part ways after their quest is complete. Joel decides to ride one of the horses in the morning. He gives Ellie the option of staying with Tommy or joining him, and she opts for the latter. Joel and Ellie practice target shooting in the wilderness before continuing on to the university, where the fireflies are said to be holding up. There are no guards in sight, and as they go inside, all they see are monkeys and a map with numerous points pointing towards Salt Lake City. Unfortunately, for scavengers appear outside as well, forcing Joel and Ellie to flee. They had the vantage point, therefore they could have shot them. Unfortunately, they go outside, and when one of them attacks Joel, the man stabs him in the gut. Ellie fires blindly to protect him as the other three hunters arrive, and happily none of them have guns, so they escape without more conflict. Joel, on the other hand, is injured and grips his stomach in anguish, eventually falling from the horse. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and watch our other videos as well. Till then, see you on the next video.